Good morning. Well, it, you know, it never feels that when one thing goes wrong, 20 things go wrong. Am I right? So I'm just going to lift my chair a little bit. Good morning and uh, welcome. I'm going to be talking with you today about how to infuse your values into your content, your offers, and your sales pitch. And I want to talk to you more than um, about how, but about why. Why is that important? Um, you've probably seen or heard other coaches who talk about um, how important it is to speak to the outcome uh, when you're crafting your offer so that your potential clients know exactly what to expect from what you are offering in terms of your program so that they know, is this what I want or need or not? Right. So um, one of the things that I know about my program, for example, is uh, I probably put too much in there. Uh, it's not always a good thing to put so much in there, but because I do seem to attract people who are newer to entrepreneurial life, um, I felt like that was really important. I found that when I was actually working with people one on one, there was a lot of kind of fundamental foundation stuff that needed to be done. So that's why I've packed that full of great learning. Um, do you need to be an expert in the things I know? No, obviously not. It took me 35, 40 working years, 40 working years, holy cow, I'm old, uh, 40 working years to figure these things out, right? So the variety of experiences that we bring together are what are going to help us. But I want you to think for a moment about offers that you have taken advantage of. Just, just for a moment, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to think back. What was an offer that you saw and took advantage of, right? Hopefully you've hired a coach, right? If you are a coach, I hope that you've hired a coach. If you are selling a product, I hope you've purchased somebody's product here from an online space, right? Because we should, you know, it's expecting to receive something that we are unwilling to do. It's a bit of a disconnect for the universe. So, um, and for the natural order of things and the natural balance of things. So if, if you're not, then I will strongly encourage you to do that um, because it does help you to actually have a couple of things. Number one, it helps you analyze your own buying uh, decision-making patterns. It helps you to recognize what are the things that are important to you. When you've had an experience making a purchase, you can sit down hopefully in a quiet space and sit down and reflect deeply on what was it about that that made me feel, yes, this is what I want and this is what I'm willing to spend my money on. And I want you to challenge yourself to look for the value in terms of core values, not in terms of, oh, well, they told me that the return on investment I would get would be fourfold, right? Of course, we all want fourfold return on investment or higher. That would be fantastic. However, not everybody is offering a financial gain. So if we're talking about uh, quanti uh, qualifiable, right? So qualitative things that people look for in programs, because imagine you're a mindset coach or imagine you're a somatic healer or imagine you um, are an anxiety uh, coach or imagine you help people to reduce chronic pain or imagine you are helping women to lose weight. The outcome that you're providing in that case is a little less numerically oriented and a lot more emotionally oriented, right? Um, something that may not be new to you is that when we are making decisions, we are doing that from two places in our brain. One of them is the emotional side. One of them is the logical side. And so the logical side is going to analyze facts and determine from there. The emotional side, however, is kind of that little instinctive piece in us, right? That, that place just below the breast line, that's your solar plexus. There's a feeling that happens in there as we're trying to make decisions. And what's actually happening is our matrix is measuring this opportunity against our values. So when we talk about core values, we're talking about things like integrity. We're talking about security. We're talking about um, impact or significance. We're talking about trust, empathy, uh, vulnerability. Oh gosh, there's so many, authenticity. There's so many core values we can be talking about. And so what I'm thinking I'd like to talk to you about today is how you actually uncover your own 
and how you uncover those of your clients so that as you're creating your messaging, you can actually speak to those specific core values. So I want you to take, so I hope I've got an example ready for you, nice and prepped. I, I was so ready for this yesterday. And the power of, did you know how a little blip um, can actually kind of take you off track and move you into some new thought pattern and trying to come back to the one you had earlier can be a little bit difficult. Well, that's what I'm experiencing right now. So I hope you'll bear with me as we talk about this. Yesterday, I was so clear in my mind. Today, I'm like, what was I going to talk about again? Anyway, <laughs> so your values. So I want you to, I want you to think about values. And if you'd like, I'm going to put up a list of emotion words that describe values or value words that describe values. So things like integrity, um, which is really honesty, accountability, right? So those are two words that are really more emotion-based words than value specifically words. So we'll, we'll get a list together for you to help you um, figure out what yours are. And I will mention right now, I'm actually working on a workshop for July and it's a four hour workshop and it's called, um, the emo I'm going to be using a tool that I, I use with my clients. It's called the Emotional Culture Deck. This is a phenomenal workshop that actually helps you get to the root of what you truly value, your core values, what you bring to the table that, that speaks to values. However, in the meantime, it's important that you start kind of thinking that through for yourself right now. And if you're interested in getting in on that workshop, let me know. I haven't decided what it's going to be priced at or anything like that. I just know it's going to be the last week of July. At this point, that's all I know is it's the last week of July. And you'll want to carve out four hours of time to attend that. And it is a hands-on, working through, collaboration, right? Bring your friends. <laughs> kind of thing so that you can actually have really um, deep level thinking that's happening in that workshop. Anyway, I'll give more detail about that. I, I've been using this tool for a few years. Going back to values and using your core values and what you believe to be your clients or your prospective clients core values. So I want you to think about making a statement that says, oh, look, you know, I'm going to teach you how to scale up your business. Is it about the increased money that somebody is actually paying attention? Or is it about what that money is going to give them? Why do we pursue money as an example? Why do we pursue weight loss and, and a healthier, uh, prettier body? Oh, I think I may have just answered my own question, health. Um, but why do we pursue these? Why do we consider making change? And really, that's what it is that you're selling to your potential client. You're selling change. So why would your client consider a change? They would consider a change if and when what you're offering is going to help them to support one of their values. If, for example, um, somebody is saying to you, uh, okay, Authenticity, I think you all know, is an important core value for me. Authenticity, being completely authentic. And if you don't know this, it's because I spent the first 45 to 47 years of my life not being authentic. I was a people pleaser um, and I was a perfectionist and I was constantly trying to be the person that you needed me to be so that you would accept me. I'm not that person anymore. I am completely who I really am. Um, and if you don't like it, I say, thank you so much. Bless you. Have a wonderful day. Uh, I hope that you can, you are there as well, because that's what I really strongly encourage is finding ways to be so okay with yourself, even the ugly bits. And I'm digressing. So we're going to go back on to values. So for me, authenticity is very much a core value. And part of that is because I wasn't for so long and I lived as an anxious person. I have no interest in going back to being that anxious person. It was crippling, absolutely crippling. So I don't want to go back there. So as I'm making decisions about things, one of the things that I'm weighing it against is, is this going to force me to stop being authentic? Am I going to have to adjust who I am to meet somebody else's needs or to make someone else happy? If that's the case, I won't do it. So now imagine somebody comes along and offers a program where they say, oh, I'm, I'm going to give you all this wonderful money every month and, uh, 
And it's going to be so easy. You just have to follow this easy, simple four-step process, right? And we hear this all the time. There are hundreds of offers out there like this. What if that program is completely centered on not being yourself, being the person that your audience wants, telling them what they want to hear, but it actually doesn't match up with what I'm going to deliver. For me, that's a that's kind of a disconnection in authenticity. So because I value that and because the people I'm trying to attract value that, one of the things I include in my messaging is that this is about being the real you. I talk a lot about authenticity because I'm trying to reach the people who feel that being their authentic selves is really important. I don't specifically speak to how authenticity helps you to get past or through anxious feelings, but it certainly does. That's my experience. So I'm when I choose the words that I choose, it is specifically because I'm speaking to those values. So another one that's really important to me is feeling secure, right? I've lived my entire life in a state of imbalance. If you don't know, I have had a, a moderately traumatic life. Um, and, uh, so insecurity in the sense of not knowing where my ne next meal is coming from insecurity in the sense of, will I be able to pay my rent this month insecurity in the sense of, oh my gosh, I have hundreds of collection calls reaching out to me, uh, every day and I'm feeling harassed, uh, which did happen to me in my twenties. Um, oh my gosh, there's just so many things in, in life that kind of try to set you off balance in your feeling of stability and security. And so if security is a core value for you, you will likely be looking for offers that are actually going to deliver to you on that core value. So for example, security is a core value of mine. And so as I was building my offer, I thought, okay, so what is it that really matters to me? And in the beginning, I actually was thinking about, well, what I want to be able to um, live the life that I want to have and to be able to pursue the passion projects that I want to be able to pursue, I need to make $10,000 a month. That's what I, that's what I knew up front. And so my early messaging was actually around making that consistent 10K month. And I hope you, I, well, I don't say I hope, I, I, you may have noticed, how about that? That about a month, month and a half ago, I actually changed it up and we became the Consistent Income Creators Club. Instead of me saying that I help females make consistent $10,000 months. And the re <coughs> excuse me, sorry about that. And the reason for that is depending on where you're starting. So imagine you come to me and you're making $500 a month, getting you to $10,000 a month. Yes, we can absolutely do it but the amount of time that it's going to take will be a little, bit, a little bit longer. However, knowing that the strategies that I'm going to teach you are going to actually help you to consistently work less, make more money, and be able to actually pursue the passion projects that you have, have time freedom, right? Allow you to be completely authentic. You don't have to push yourself to do things that are super uncomfortable, a little bit of uncomfortable, yes. Absolutely. A little bit of uncomfortable, but I don't want you to feel as though you're being pushed so far. In fact, I actually had a conversation with one of my clients last week who was feeling really overwhelmed. Um, and it was because she felt like she was receiving all this great learning and it's so wonderful, but it was too fast for her. And so we said, okay, let's slow down. And this is the beautiful thing about working with a coach who actually is going to take in what it is that you're saying as a program that is flexible enough to do that. So for her, this worked out really, really well, that we had the ability to step back and say, okay, let's take a deep breath. Let's figure this out together, right? But if you don't have a coach that's able and willing to do that, or if their program is not designed to do that, then what? You get left behind. You, you feel as though, um, you know, oh my gosh, suddenly your imposter syndrome, ki syndrome kicks in and all of that negative self-talk. Oh my gosh, there must be something wrong with me. What's wrong with me? Why can't I, why can't I learn this? And, and, and why is this not working for me? And I'm trying so hard and I'm doing the things and I'm, I'm being consistent. It's not working. And, and it's all happening. And because they can't slow down because that's not how their program is designed. But had you known in the beginning that the program 
is on a course. It's a track, right? That, that there is no jumping off. There's no sidelining. There's no derailing. There's nothing like that. You might not have taken that offer. Even if they were promising $50,000 months, you might not have taken that offer because it didn't fit with another value. And that value could actually be about stress. It could be about authenticity. It could be about uh, time restrictions and non-negotiables that you have. And so that's one of the reasons that, you know, I include language like we make sure that we understand what your non-negotiables are. So I'm telling you about my offer, not because I want you to take my offer, because I want you to see that I'm actually putting into place the very kinds of things that I, I specifically want to try to help you to learn how to do. You may think, oh, what a, what a random choice of words she made there from time to time and not random. I'm very, very specific and particular about the words I choose as I'm writing my posts. And it is because I am thinking about the buyer psychology, right? I am thinking about what does my prospective client want to hear that I know I can deliver on that I know because there has to be that authenticity for me. What is it that they need? What is it that they want? What is their core value that I am trying to help them uh, fulfill? And that's what I write my messaging about. And I do the same thing when I'm actually in a sales conversation. So as I'm having a conversation with somebody, I ask a lot of how does that make you feel? Where is that going to get you? What do you think that will provide? Tell me more about that, right? Because I'm Using empathic communication, I'm actually doing more listening than talking and trying to draw out of them what matters and is important to them. So if you haven't seen the empathic communication uh, webinar, it's actually in our guide section. It could be guide two. Guide two and three was a long one. I think it was about a 90-minute training. Go ahead and take a look at that training. And if you want me to tag you on it, let me know. I'd be happy to tag you on it. But the, the point of it all is, is that as someone is talking, you'll hear them. If you're paying attention, if you're actively, empathically listening, you will actually start to notice a pattern of, oh, they say that word a lot. They say that word a lot. And, and make sure you write that word down because that is a core value for them. So as an example, security. Um, imagine, I wish I had somebody on this call to actually do this with so I could show you how it works. Uh, this whole notion of uncovering a person's values simply by having a, a conversation, just a quick, you know, it happens within a few minutes, you start to ask questions. So you might say to them, oh, that's wonderful. So tell me, tell me what's, you know, motivated your book disappointment today. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm just getting so overwhelmed. I'm feeling like I'm trying all the things and I've, I've taken all the freebies and I'm just, I'm just getting so confused. And what it's actually doing for me is it's actually just stopping me in my tracks and I feel like I'm not actually getting anywhere, right? So because I feel like I'm not getting anywhere, then I actually do stop. I find that I'm taking longer breaks. I'm giving myself permission to just postpone and procrastinate. I find myself doing the busy work instead of the need to do work, like the stuff that's gonna push my business forward every day. Right, and, and so somebody then starts to open up to you a little bit about why they're here. And what my hope is, is that you're going to take the things that they've said, and you're going to start asking them some questions about it. Oh, oh, that's interesting. So how, how do you feel about trying all of these things and not, unless they've already told you frustrated, uh, how does that make you feel to be working so hard, trying the things that you've been told should work and they're not? How does that make you feel? Honestly, I feel a little bit dumb. I feel like there must be something wrong with me. So I'm, I'm giving you a bit of a role play here about a conversation that I have actually had a few months ago. I feel a little bit dumb. Um, I feel like there must be something wrong with me because I'm not really, I'm not really getting it. Um, clearly, I'm not really getting it. I know there must be something missing. And I guess I'm just looking for what is that one missing thing? <clears throat> okay. What have you tried? Tell me a little bit about what you've tried. And so then the person went on to tell me about some of the things that they've tried and they've tried organic marketing, they tried a sales page, they tried um, doing Instagram ads, <clears throat> excuse me, they have a Facebook group, they have a Facebook page, um, they are constantly doing their stories, they're constantly putting up posts in other groups, um, they felt like they were constantly doing all these things, they feel like they spent their whole day in the DMs, and their other coach had told them that they need to send out a minimum of 50 DMs a day to strangers. 
Did you hear all the things that they were doing? Did you get a sense of how they may fit together or not? So what I went there, excuse me, what I went to from there was, okay, well, that sounds like you've got a lot of things that you're trying to do. Tell me about the things that did work, right? And so then they would tell me about the things that did work. Well, you know, the, I, sometimes when I post in groups, I do get a couple of friends out of that, right? Okay. So, and they would go on and tell me a few of the things that worked. And, and then I would move into, so it sounds to me, person A, like you're trying a lot of things and you're spending a lot of time trying them, but really you're not getting the results that you hoped for. And so what that means is you're putting in a lot of effort without getting a lot of return. Would you agree if I sum that up properly? Yes, that's exactly how I'm feeling. Okay, great. So um, I heard you say a little bit earlier that you were frustrated, right? Right. So tell me about which part of that, see how I'm, I'm really narrowing in, which part of that is the most frustrating? And in that particular conversation, what we discovered was it had nothing to do with um, the confusion that she was bothered by. It was actually how much time she was spending doing it. And the fact that it was actually taking her away from spending time with her family. She wasn't cooking dinner every night. And that was really important to her. That one hour where she sat down and had dinner with her family every night was so important. In fact, that's why she went into business for herself, was to have that time back with her family to create that balance between work and life. And so all of these things that she was trying, they just weren't working. So what do you think I said to her in order to show her that what I have available will work for her? I hope you're saying you said to her, Danielle, okay, person X. So if I were able to give you back three hours a day while still helping you to create the leads in your business that you need to achieve your goals and get that consistent income, because we discovered that our second priority was security. And this is why she was willing to try so hard, right? So by having this conversation with her, I was actually able to tailor what I was saying to her to specifically meet the needs that she has. So what if instead her highest core value was integrity? And what if instead um, I was talking to her about, so if I were able to help you create a content strategy that was going to be completely transparent and prevent objections in your marketing so that when people reach out to you, they know exactly what they're in for and they're completely ready to sign up. How would that, how would you feel about that? Would that be something you're interested in? So you take what the value is and you turn it into, well, I can give you that and this is how I can give you that. And if you can do that in your sales pitch, then you can absolutely do that in your content. So this is what I want to challenge you to do today. I want you to, excuse me, I want to challenge you today to figure out what are your top three core values. And if you don't mind dropping them down below and tell me what yours are, that would be fantastic. I will show you that in the process of doing my core value exercise, I actually discovered that I have many more than I expected I would, but mine ended up being security, kindness, freedom, authenticity, and accountability. Those are my top, what, one, two, three, four, five. Those are my top five. But I also have on my list integrity, vulnerability, generosity, passion, and creativity. So for me, being a non-aggressive seller and being an emotion-based, empathic, communication-based seller, who's all about helping you to see very clearly and transparently what it is that you're getting so that you know that this is a good decision for you and you will feel good about it because my whole thing is that I don't want people to feel buyer's remorse. I like to overpromise and underdeliver, and my whole thing is about ensuring that I am meeting my highest values and your highest values. And I think that's the reason that I am so successful in what I do. It's because I am specifically driving for my core values. I feel at peace in my business because I'm striving for my core values. Was it always this way? Nope. No, it wasn't. 
When I first started off in business here in Facebook land uh, last year, uh, I admit I was trying to figure out how to do it. I had never had to work in an online environment before as an entrepreneur, not where it was the sole um, source of my income. My four companies that I built and ran um, from my own from scratch, they were all offline. They were all retail-based, product-based, and they all actually ended up happening, happening to be uh, rooted in my own creativity, which I thought was really, really interesting. I hadn't really thought about that before. So this creativity is an important one for me as well. But so because it wasn't before, a lot of times I was making rash decisions based on um, lofty promises because I didn't understand what it was that I specifically needed to get. And now that I know that authenticity, integrity, and security are my top three, now that's what I look for. And that's what I speak to in mine because that's what's the most important to me, right? So what you're looking for when you're trying to attract your ideal client is typically someone who's a lot like you. Most of us don't want to work with somebody who's like the complete opposite of us. Most of us, as we're creating our ideal client profile, are looking for somebody who's a lot like us. We fine tune what the values are that our ideal client has and holds dear through market research. And we talked about, I think that was last week that we talked about market research. So knowing your values is the first step. So today I want you to take a little bit of time and sit down 15 minutes, maybe half an hour. And I want you to write down all the things that you think you hold as high core values. And I will drop a picture somewhere in this post perhaps um, that shows some possible words that you can choose. From there, I'm going to next week do another one where I'm going to hopefully have somebody come on with me and I'm going to do an exercise to show you how you uncover your client's core values, okay? So I'm looking for a volunteer to do that with me. Anyone, anyone, anyone say hi. Volunteers, volunteers. I don't do voluntold. Too many times I've been voluntold, so I don't do that. Um, anyway, so if you're interested in taking part in that, I would love to do that with you. I think we've now been on here for about half an hour. I hope I've said what I meant to say. Um, really what I'm trying to express is that your core values are of just such paramount importance in your messaging and to your potential clients. And speaking to them about their actual values is really important as well. And I would also suggest that in your conversation with them as you're uncovering them, I would say, and I do say, so it sounds to me like security is a really high value for you. Would you agree with that? Right? So it's the check-in, it's the feedback loop, and including your discoveries with them as they're talking and saying, oh, that's really interesting. So it sounds to me like ha having security in your life, you know, knowing that your bills will be paid, knowing that you're not going to have to stress about whether or not you've got enough to, you know, handle that emergency that comes up or the pet needs to go to the vet suddenly twice in six months that you weren't expecting. And right. So there's things come up in life. And so security is something that's really important to people. So to be able to say to somebody, so it sounds to me like having financial security is really important to you. Would you agree? It helps you to know that's the thing I need to zero in on. Oh, so I help people create consistent income that provides them with financial security. Isn't that interesting? Oh, and I do that through systems and processes that gives them their time back. Interesting. Oh, and I also don't uh, suggest that people do cold DMs and, and we do organic kinds of marketing. Maybe we include some paid ads and it's really all about what are you comfortable with and how do we only push you a big toe out of your comfort zone at a time, unless you're like me and you're like, ah, throw all the change at me at once. Most people aren't like that though. So there you go. All right, guys, I think I've rambled on long enough. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday. Happy Wow Wednesday. Um, I did not get an application to be the member spotlight this week. So there's still time. You want in? Drop me a message below. I'd be happy to get you all prepped and we'll do that this evening. All right. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thanks. Bye-bye.